This brings us now to the last problem under our applications of discrete random variables, and that's the coupon collector's problem. So again, suppose we've got a large bin that contains many copies of n coupons. If you want a concrete example, think n equals 10, so 10 coupons. And you can imagine that there's infinitely many of each of these n coupons. So no matter how many you've drawn already, there are still more that are in there that you could likely draw. And assuming there are equal numbers of each coupon, if we draw the coupons at random from the bin, on average, how many draws will it take to get at least one copy of each of the n coupons? An alternative but equivalent problem could be the die rolling problem, where you've got a, a die, let's say a six-sided die, and you roll it. And you want to know, on average, how many rolls will it take so that every number has appeared at least once? So every one of the six numbers appears at least once. So that's a alternative to the coupon collector's problem. There, you don't really have to think about there being infinitely many coupons because you could continually roll the die and get the same value over and over again. That's the analogous idea to this big bag of coupons having as many copies of one type of coupon as is needed. All right, so how many draws will it take to get at least one of every type of coupon? That's what we're interested in. So let's get a feel for what's going on here. I mean, let's just play with a small example and see what kinds of things we're going to be interested in. So for example, let's just consider the case. I mean, I wrote n equals 10 up there. It really makes no difference. This can be anything. It doesn't have to be 10. We can just use an arbitrary n, which I will. But in our example down below, maybe I'll take four coupons just so I can draw them. So we're going to assume we have four types of coupons. So here's our coupons. And we are interested in doing some draws. So we're going to pick a coupon. So maybe I'll indicate here's my draws. Draw one, draw two, draw three, and we'll just keep going and I'll fill in these spots. So what is the coupon that we get? Well, maybe for example, we got coupon number two on our first draw, and then we got three, and then we drew again, and we got a two, and then, oh, we got a three again, and then, oh, we finally got a new one again, so we got, we got a one. So now I've got at least three of the four coupons, and then, oh, success on the fourth draw, sorry, on the sixth draw, I ended up getting the fourth coupon, and now I've got all four coupons. It took me six draws, but I managed to do it. And the question is, how many draws on average will it take to collect all four coupons? So a few things that we want to keep track of is you can, you sort of heard me celebrate when I was like, oh, I got a, I got another one, so I got the one, so I got a third coupon. That's an important milestone when we get a new coupon. So we've got an important milestone right there. We've got our first coupon. And then, oh, we got another milestone because now at this point I've got two coupons. And then we drew the third one and it was like, oh, we got a two. Okay, so I got one I already had. You know, and think about this as when, whenever you're collecting some mystery packs of something, whether it's Lego minifigures or what have you, you open it up and you're like, oh, I've already got this one. Well, that's kind of what's happening here. Oh, I've already got this coupon. And then I do that for the fourth draw. Oh, I've already got that coupon. And then for the fifth one, oh, yes, I got a, I got a new coupon. Excellent. So I got a new one. There we go. And then finally, I've got the fourth one. Yep, collected the whole set. There we go. Only took me six draws to do it, but I finally collected the whole set. So these are what we're going to call the records. Now, this isn't going to come, I mean, this, this terminology isn't going to be that important as we move along, so it's all right if you don't remember the terminology of records, but the idea is, you know, sort of, we set a record. <laughs> we, we got the second coupon on the second step. Oh, and it wasn't until the fifth step where we set a record and got the third coupon and so on. So these are our records of when the new coupons appear. So we got the first new coupon on the first step. When did we get the second new coupon? 
we got it on the second step. When did we get the third new coupon? We got it on the fifth step. And when did we get the fourth new coupon? It took us the sixth step. So those are our records. And we could encode this as a record sequence. So what's our record sequence? It would be one, two, five, six. That's just saying I got my first coupon on the first draw and I didn't get my second new one until the second draw. I got my third new one on the fifth draw and then my fourth new one on the sixth draw. The other thing we want to keep track of, and this is actually going to be uh, of importance, is the runs. So these runs are you know, the gaps between when I've got a new coupon. So for a runs, we'll use capital T to denote this. So we'll start with capital T. I'm actually going to move this back a bit because we'll always assume capital T 1 is 1. And then the next values are just going to be how long is the run before I get the next coupon. So I went from you know, my new coupon that I first collected to the next new coupon, I just did a run of one. So to get the next or the second coupon that was new to me, it took me a run of one. And then what's next? Well, to get the next coupon that was new to me, it took me a longer run. It took me a run of one, two, three. So that was T3 is three. So it took me three draws before I finally got a new coupon. And the longer these runs are, the more disappointed you, you are as you go along. Oh, I got another one that I already have, got another one that I already have. Um, and so that's what these runs are. They're sort of the gaps between getting these new ones. And then the last one, the run before I get the fourth coupon that I'm looking for, well, that was a run of length one. And here's the, the key idea. The runs really contain what we're interested in. So if I sum over these runs, so in this case we've got four coupons, so it's one to n, but in our case it's i equals one to four, of Ti. So that's T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4. What is that? That's 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1. So that's 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1, which is 6. And that's exactly how many draws it took to get all coupons. So I've just broken down the drawing sequence and I've tried to pull out some important details and the main important details are these run lengths. The sum of the run lengths is going to give me the total number of draws it took overall to get all the coupons. So that's really what I'm interested in is the sum of these run lengths. So the run lengths will be the random variables I'm interested in. Their sum is ultimately the random variable I really care about. Okay, so that's our example that we can sort of keep in the back of our head and compare things to. But here are the details. So we've got S. S is our sample space. Now, what is our sample space? It's just all possible drawing sequences of coupons. And that means it's these sequences are infinite in length, and it's just any arrangement of how I could draw these coupons. So this is the infinite a set of infinite sequences in the alphabet 1, 2, all the way up to n. So those are our n coupons. So that's our sample space. We're going to now introduce our random variables. So let t that's the ultimately the random variable that we're interested in. So this is be the number of coupons 
we draw to get at least one of each type. And we will let ti, now this is what I want to encode as the runs. So ti is about the length of the next run. So t1 is 1, t2 is just how many draws do I have to take before I get the second newest coupon. Now that second newest doesn't mean the second coupon. I've labeled the coupons 1 through 4. But the second coupon just means the second one that's new to me. It's the one that I haven't got yet. So here our second coupon in our example ended up being coupon number 3 because it was the second newest coupon I got. Coupon number 1 for me was 2. Coupon number 2 was 3. Coupon number 3 ended up being 1 because that was the one I got third. And coupon number 4 ended up being 4 because that was the one I got fourth. So what are we going to do here? Well, TI is basically trying to encode these gaps between getting the i to minus 1 coupon and getting the i coupon. So let it be the number of coupons we draw between getting the i minus first coupon and the ith coupon. So it's our run. It's our run between i minus 1 and 1, oh, sorry, between i minus 1 and i. So we can write it as uh, this is the ith run, as we've called it. So now our observation at this point is that the random variable we are interested in is just the sum of these run variables. And so the expected value of t is the sum of the expected values of these ti's where i goes from 1 to n and that's by linearity. Again we're using the fact that the expected value is a linear function on random variables. So now what do we want to do? Well we'd like to work out what is the expected value of ti. So let's go ahead and do that. So for i between 1 and n Let's try to figure out what the expected value of ti is. So to do that, we're going to have to work out the probability of ti being each of the values that it can take on, each value in its range. So what can ti be? Well, ti could be 1. ti could be 2 and so on. So we could look at, in general, what is the probability when ti equals k. So let's get a handle on the first view before we go for the general one. So what is that? The probability that ti equals 1. So that's the probability that the ith run is of length only 1. So that means I've just drawn the i minus first coupon. Hooray, I got a new coupon. And then the next coupon I draw is a new one as well. That's what it means to have a run length of 1. I just drew a new one right after I finished drawing a new one. So that's the best, right? You get the, the new coupon and then, I'm thinking minifigures here from Lego. You get the new one and then right after that you open the pack and you get another new one. Great. So what is the probability that will happen? Well, it's basically you're reaching into the bag and you're pulling something out. Of the n choices you have to pull out, you don't want i minus one of them because you've already got those ones. 
So of the end choices you want to pull out, you don't want those i minus 1. So the ones you do want are n minus i minus 1. And that's out of the total of n possibilities. So that's your probability that you got a new one right after you selected the i minus first new one. How about uh, for ti equals 2? So that means you just got the i minus first new one, and then you drew, uh, I got a repeat, ah, uh, but I draw again, yay, I got a new one. So how does that happen? Well, it means the way you're going to do that is you're going to have to draw on that first draw after you got the i minus first new one. So on that first draw, you actually end up picking one of the i minus ones. So that's how many choices you have for that first pick. And then the second pick, you end up picking one of the new ones. And that's out of the total of n times n or n squared possible choices. And so we can group this as i minus 1 over n. So that was really the probability of picking a repeat times n minus i minus 1 over n. That's the probability of picking a new one. And how about a run of k? So for a run of k, it means I would have had to pick a repeat k minus 1 times. So that's a repeat, and I would have had to do that k minus 1 times. And then I get the new one. Hooray, got my new one. And that's over a total of n to the k possible choices I would have had. So there's our probability. I can regroup them. I get an i minus 1 over n to the k minus 1, and I take that other n and I move it over here. And so again, that's the probability of picking k minus 1 repeats. That's the i minus 1 over n to the k minus 1 times the probability of getting a new one on your kth draw of that run. That's the n minus i minus 1 over n. And so that's what we're interested in. This is that probability. So all that work up till now was really about getting at this probability and then using this probability to work out the expected value of ti. Now what do I notice about this probability? If we set p equal to n minus i minus 1 over n, that appeared quite a bit in our expressions above, and also so did this quantity which I'll call q, i minus 1 over n, then what we get is that the probability in this case, where ti is equal to k, can be written as q to the k minus 1 times p, and we just notice here that if I add p and q together, they give me 1. So this is actually a geometric distribution. So that's a nice observation to make. This is a geometric distribution. Big exclamation mark there. Why is that? Uh, an exciting thing to observe? Well, once we observe it's a geometric distribution, I can immediately get then that the expected value of that random variable is just 1 over p. Because that's what we've already shown in the last lecture for geometric distribution. So what is 1 over p? p was that n minus i minus 1 over n, so the reciprocal of that would be n over n minus i minus 1. And therefore, now we can come all the way back up to where we started here, we are interested in the expected value of t. We have now just worked out the expected value of ti, and so what we get is the expected value of t is the expected value of t1 plus all the way up to the expected value of tn. 
So this becomes the sum of n over n minus i minus 1. And that's as i goes from 1 to n. So let's just write out the first few values. Notice that n is not changing, so I can bring the n all the way out front. And then what's left is 1 over n minus i minus 1, when i is 1, that's, so that's n minus 0, so that's a 1 over n plus, and then a 1 over n minus, when i is 2, that becomes an n minus 1 in the denominator, plus, all the way down to 1 over 2 plus 1. So this is known as a harmonic number, the nth harmonic number. So it's just the sum of the reciprocals of 1, 2, all the way up to n. So we can write then the expected value for t. So the expected number of draws I'd have to make in order to get all the coupons is n times the nth harmonic number. And so there we go. In particular, just for an example, so for example, n equals 3. Let's say we had three coupons and we wanted to try to draw until we got all three of them. How many draws on average would we have to do? The expected number of draws would be 3 times h sub 3. That's 3 times h sub 3 is 1 third plus 1 half plus 1. That's the third harmonic number. So that would be 3 times, and we'll put those over a common denominator of 6. So that would be 2 plus 3 plus 6 over 6. Or in other words, 11 halves, which is 5.5. So on average, we'd have to make about 5.5 draws, so somewhere between 5 or 6 draws, and we should be able to get all three coupons. All right, there is a final exercise that I'll leave for you to ponder. In this case, on average, how many times would you have to toss a fair coin in order to get both a heads and a tails? So, you know, how many times would you have to do it so that you at least get one head and one tails? You may flip the coin and get five heads and then finally a tail. In that case, you would have gotten both a heads and a tails. Or you may do it right away. Heads, flip, tails, flip, and so you've done it in in uh, two flips. So I want you to take these ideas that we just did for the coupon problem and apply them in this particular case of flipping a coin and getting heads and tails. All right, that's it for this section and that's it for probability. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.